emotional or well-being of the mother is critical to the child, nigga. And the shame, the little, the little girl smoking them cigarettes and them blunts and sneaking and taking them sh and the, the motherfucking me shot still. Man, nigga, you don't give a damn about the baby. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, that little boy Blueface can't give a damn about the baby that this girl Christian Rock for to put out. I'm, I'm, I'm all, yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, that boy don't give a damn about that baby at motherfucking all. And here you is sitting up on this motherfucking platform, gibbling and gossiping every motherfucking day and right before your eyes with your artists. Y'all got some real motherfucking issues, nigga. The new Ike and Tina Turner. Some real motherfucking issues that's taking place and going on. And, and, and man, nigga, and you will not speak on it. And then just the way the boy disrespect his mama. What, what kind of, homie, listen, if real G niggas, if nothing else, go tell this homie, come on, homie, don't do mama like that. Nigga, if nothing else, nigga, real G niggas, homie, just, nah, man, don't do mama like that. Nah, 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 I don't know what kind of nigga, you know what? Them strawberry kids, strawberry, strawberry, you nigga mad at your mama, uh, and admire your daddies. And doing your mama's just how your daddy's did it and then doing the bitch you having babies with, making babies with, and doing them the same way. Uh, nigga, if nothing else, yeah, I can't tell you how to treat them little old rag lad hoe, but I can tell whack something, because whack go listen. Blue face, whack, whack go listen to me, because whack listen to every motherfucking thing I say. And I don't listen to nothing the fuck he say. Yeah, I can't tell you nothing about what this bitch be talking about half the time. I just know every day he on clubhouse. Arguing and squabbling with a man or a woman. Every day. It's been two years now. It ain't been a day went by. It ain't been one day went by since me and Wack 100 got into it two years ago that Wack ain't been waking up on Clubhouse every day arguing with somebody. He ain't built a platform. Man, I can point to so many people and they got them built YouTube channels. Man, Wack ain't did none of that on this Clubhouse. Nobody's. They still been talking about what they finna start paying on Clubhouse. Guess what, Clubhouse? Y'all still ain't got paid yet. Y'all still on this motherfucker wishing and hoping. And then one thing I ain't seen, I ain't seen now motherfucker take a clubhouse audio and put that bitch on YouTube and get a million views or 200,000 listening. It has to be audio and visual. Uh, this is... This is the new chat line. Remember, nigga was in middle school, and you can call them motherfucking chat line. That's what this is. It's not beneficial. You can't show nobody your T-shirt. You can't show the food you made. All the shit that y'all doing over here. I watched Anton Daniels. Anton Daniels got two YouTube channels. Now, this, this, watch this game I'm finna get y'all. Anton Daniels got two YouTube channels. One of them is called Anton Daniel something, and the other one is called Don't Do Coke in the Bathroom. He takes these videos. Now, Anton paid me roughly probably around $10,000 a month to shoot on top of our standing presidential suites. That's enough about that. I watched Anton film content. I'm not saying Clubhouse Audio isn't content. It is. I watched Anton take content from two different channels and create content on another social media platform on several different. So he's taking YouTube videos that he's taking on YouTube, upload them on YouTube. He's taking them to Patreon. Uh, then he got another little area where his back. So people pay to see his recorded videos, uh, unedited, uh, without the bleeping, so then he take the bleeping ones to YouTube and double dip over there with two different channels. So I'm saying, oh, we that's good game. And I'm watching the channel grow monthly. But listen to where the power lies. Yeah, you got a big platform. Yeah, a lot of people uh, is, is 
wakes up to come to this platform to hear you talk on this platform. See, the power lies is when you can get off of these social media platforms. And when you get off, can you make this following go where you go? That's what they're looking at, boy. And you know who can do that? I watched Anton Daniels do it. Not only Anton Daniels, Charleston White do it. He been doing it. He went from Facebook to Facebook following, followed him to YouTube, to YouTube, followed him to Instagram, wherever I go, nigga, that following follows me. It goes where I go. So I said, okay, ooh, we these niggas on these big old platform. The niggas on YouTube, they can't switch over to the podcast world. These niggas with these big YouTube channels, they can't do podcasts. Vlad tried it and flopped. The niggas with the podcast try to do the YouTube channels, and then they flopping. Okay, okay. The the Instagram, well, the Facebook niggas, they quietly getting the money like Country Wayne. With the Facebook free, or them niggas touching big money just on that platform, but they can't go nowhere else. I'm saying to myself, nigga, I'm killing on all social media platforms. Now, let's see, nigga, you done conquered all social media platforms. Let's see if you can make this come to life. Let's do it. But how can we make it come to life, nigga? Nigga, open you up. Start, nigga, go build your website, www.therealtrostonwhite.com. That merchandise is selling like a motherfucker. Boy, that merchandise is selling like a motherfucker. Oh, it is. Okay, now. Okay. Okay, that's 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 good. That's good. They took your YouTube channel. Okay, nigga, you got a buzz. Jack your motherfucking prices up high, and let's see who will pay for it. Nigga, seventy five hundred dollar interviews, sixty five hundred dollar interviews, twelve thousand dollar interviews, thirty thousand dollar interviews. Ooh we they follow me. And wherever I do an interview, my following goes there too. I said, ooh, boy, they rocking with me. They follow me wherever I go. Let me see. I wonder if I can sell out. I'm going to do stand-up comedy. I wonder where they follow me there too. And they follow me there too. That's when you realize and understand the power and the gift of influence. That's why a lot of y'all stuck over here. And you can't make this go over there. And when you come over here, you can't get their attention and make them come over here. I I've learned to use the power and the gift of influence. Everybody around me have a monetized YouTube channel. Not only just everybody, even the kids. My homeboy son, this one, I monetize. I use the power. I go to my people, say, y'all, woo, 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 and they monetize them for me. I go to my Facebook fan page. They'll monetize. I, I learn how to make them come over here too. So when I cut the cameras off and I get off the and, 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 and YouTube or somebody, they, they take my page and they shut me down. Guess what? They still come to, they go come to the show to see me. If I'm, if, if I'm at a trail ride, they go come to the trail ride to see me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, it's been two years that I first got introduced to Clubhouse. Same thing, same day, same week. Nothing has changed. Still doing the exact same things that they was doing when this motherfucker first started. My mother will, 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 will remind me that the definition of insanity is doing the exact same things and expecting different results. That's been the clubhouse population. Been holding on to whatever hope and a prayer that they said, well, they finna start paying. Man, they finna start paying over there. They ain't paid yet because they can't run commercials. So this is what I've learned, and this is a teachable moment for you people, and because y'all listening good too now. I'm 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 the host of a Live Nation tour, 
56 cities, four countries. Grown Folks Talking Tour, headed by T.K. Kirkland. I'm the host. So, even though I jumped out in comedy, and I sold out 23 shows from October to now, my highest was 1,100. Sold out. Atlantic City, New Jersey. My smallest venue, 250. I had a comedian that wasn't as big as me in the beginning said, man, well, you can host for me. I said, well, man, I'm beating you. How am I going to host for you? I said that out of ignorance and arrogance because I didn't understand comedy. I thought because I had the bigger name and a bigger platform that it was an insult for me to host for him. So I turned down learning the comedy game with him. And I say he probably was a C-list, C, C-list comedian. So fast forward two or three years later, uh, T.K. Kirkland reached out to me put me in this position and he said uh i'm gonna take you back to the beginning i'm gonna teach you everything you need to know uh and he mentioned uh, 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 a word called master of ceremony a uh, mc he said i'm gonna make you the greatest mc and if you can learn how to be an mc he said because there's no age and there's no expiration date on comedy and if you learn to be a good mc you can do comedy forever brother and it made sense the master ceremony, the nigga that worked the crowd. And see, I was jumping on stage, selling out shows, running from the crowd. See, only time I would address and fuck with the crowd if the hecklers was fucking with me. I didn't know how to engage the crowd because I was somewhat intimidated, not knowing if I could remember the jokes. So he take me all the way back to the beginning. So the beginning of the comedy is understanding the master ceremony, how to work that crowd. How to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So peep game, right? So they come to me. And, 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 and he asked me, he says, uh, very politely, uh, could you stop smoking while in front of the camera and on camera? And, and I want y'all to hear me good. This is why th- this pla- this why this app would never make any money on here. That advertiser would never use this platform. When he told me to quit smoking in front of the camera, my initial response was no problem. I understand that I have to now start becoming more advertiser friendly. Bingo, you're a smart man is what he said. I said, yeah, nah, homie, I get it. Because I've been studying and researching and, and understanding what advertiser friendly mean. This platform is not advertiser friendly. No major company, no major corporation that deals with anything of ethics and and, and principles and and standards and and morals and values and has a a, a mission and a vision statement would attach themselves to this. All you got to do is sit back and listen. Listen to the daily conversations. Listen to the the threats that's made, the, the, the negativity that's spewed. And nigga, these is people and they real feeling because they start out one way and end up another way. Nobody ends, nobody gets on and off this app in peace and harmony. So what brand, what what person who markets, what what, what person who who wants to advertise, want to advertise of a bunch of people who lacks peace? Mass confusion, arguing, hollering. Oh, you know what? Threats. Threats of violence. Threats of aggression. And there's never no reconciliation. There's never no reconciliation when they come back the next day. There's never no consequences for whoever was wrong, even if they was in some way the clubhouse leadership. There's no accountability, should I say. It's called 